my pleasure to take part in this important event. When directed towards the public good, artificial intelligence on unprecedented capabilities can foster productive dialogue and empower individuals. However, if left unchecked, AI also poses a massive threat to democratic societies. AI is as good as the data that feeds it. And AI can be an asset and a liability, and the only thing that determines the direction is the type of data and the type of regulations that the AI is trained of and the framework that it has to build and govern them. Many of the flaws attributed to AI systems in, is inherent to data, its quality, its completeness, and its representationness. For example, black defendants are being flagged as riskier than white defendants because there are more arrests and convictions of black defendants. So the AI system sees race as a causation, ignoring historical and cultural discrimination. And it leads to all the stereotypes and biases that we have in the systems. Women, on the other hand, see less advertisements for executive and high-level job posts because the AI system is trained on CVs of past executives, which, no surprise, are mostly men. In other words, artificial intelligence cannot understand that correlation does not imply causation. And this is worsened when most conversation about artificial intelligence is now concentrated on large language models like ChartGPT, that had led to erroneous or even fictitious information being presented as an authoritative truth. A fake photo of an explosion outside the Pentagon is very well known now, for instance. And this is in addition to other very important problems like cybersecurity, data protection, impacts on the labor market, environmental damage, you name it. All these impacts are largely neglected by the business model of AI companies. And the lessons that we must learn from our dealing with AI is the need to put in practice its alignment with human rights and with inclusive and fair outcomes. With the proliferation of LLM or large language models, this has become even more important. We need to achieve a balance. And at UNESCO, we elaborated the recommendation on the ethics of artificial intelligence adopted in 2021 by the 193 countries, and now we have the US joining us, and so it is 194 countries. And ethics is at the center of the instruments, and this allows us to remain critical, to ask the right questions, and to look for better answers. The recommendation determines that these technologies need to enhance and promote human rights, human dignity, fairness, inc inclusivity, environmental sustainability, and gender equality. These are the general values of our societies, but these values are then translated into principles of accountability, transparency, privacy, aiming at the ultimate outcome, which is to ensure the rule of law. And then the document gets into concrete policy actions that governments can draw on to steer the technological development because it's about the governance of these developments. To ensure that the AI technology is not taking over, for example, our standards calls for always ensuring human determination. And to reinforce this, we have forbidden giving le legal personality to artificial intelligence. This was not shared by all members, but at the end, they committed to it. We have also stated that when there is harm, there should be compensation and that AI should not be used for manipulation and cognitive biases. To further reinforce the fulfillment of the global instrument, we develop a holistic implementation plan that strengthens the capacities of governments around the world to govern this domain, because it's the governments that have the duty of care. And at the core of our implementation plan, there are two capacity building tools. The readiness assessment methodology the, 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 is a tool that assesses the preparedness of governments to implement AI ethically with the institutions, with the legal practices, with the regulations, and is now being piloted in about 50 countries around the world. The insights that we are gathering will help us to develop a model, of gov model governance framework for AI, which will map the institutional frameworks on how we can govern these technologies. The second tool is the ethical impact assessment, 
which facilitates the prediction of consequences and mitigation of risk of AI systems by a multi-stakeholder engagement before a system is released to the public, allowing those developing or procuring AI uh, systems to avoid harmful outcomes. But you need to do this ex ante, not ex post. And it is also aimed at private companies who want to be leaders in the space. The private sector is, a, is vital in these discussions, but the solution is not self-regulation. It has never been. It cannot be the result of bilateral discussions between tech companies and governments in the global north on matters that will impact the whole planet. Ethical impact assessment is thus a first step to enforce these commitments. And we're also looking on how to achieve, achieve more inclusive outcomes. And we are convening a network of AI experts from across governments, the private sector, academia, civil society, including the AI ethics experts without borders networks of UNESCO and the Women for Ethical AI platform to further support member states in developing best practices and in-house expertise among policymakers. We need to include voices from across society and from around the world. Our approach to ethical artificial intelligence governments must be multilateral, multi-stakeholder and truly inclusive to ensure that good practices and effective governance frameworks and legislation are shared, are led together and are adopted internationally and that the benefits of these technologies are equitably distributed. All of our work will be presented as, uh, at our flagship annual event, the UNESCO Global Forum on the Ethics of Artificial Intelligence, which will be held in Slovenia on the 5th and 6th of February in 2024. And I'd like to invite you, those that are interested, to join us. And I wish you a fruitful discussion, discussion for the rest of the day.